You know the one about the fish who asks the other fish how he likes the ocean? And the fish says, what ocean? Well, that's our condition too. You and I are immersed in an all-encompassing force that drives us forward or backward with our scarcely realizing it. What is the strange power in which we live and move and try to have our being? Culture, mass-mediated culture. It invades us from all sides, coloring our values, our dreams, even our religions. Whether this is good or bad is not the point for us to consider today. What we are going to try to accomplish together is to recognize this power and to see its impact on our hearts and minds. We may not be able to become entirely free from the influence of our culture, but at least we can avoid being passively consumed by its dictates. Let's take a look at one of the primary ways in which this culture comes to us. One of the most efficient handmaidens of our culture is found in all these cute little gadgets we clever humans have invented. We've got a name for all this technology. Media. Like medium. Like the environment. The ocean we live in. Most of us have grown up in a world brought to us by the media. Our information, our ideals, our heroes are both reflected in and created by motion pictures, radio advertising and television. The people we watch on our screens become models on which we pattern our lives, purveyors of the values and beliefs of the culture which created them. And through projecting images of the dominant culture into our psyche, we too become incorporated into that culture, quite often subconsciously. The potential of this medium which is such a part of our lives is tremendous. As an art form, it can astonish, challenge, inspire. It can intensify our sense of the divine within and beyond everyday life. Like all fine art, this medium can be the occasion of an encounter with the spirit, an encounter too deep for words. of being a global community, our understanding of other cultures, our compassion for brothers and sisters suffering in other lands is also a part of our experience of the media. But there is another side of the mass media a dark side, which affects our attitudes far more than we might want to admit. It often assumes a view of life that runs counter to some of our deepest spiritual insights. Survival of the fittest is the way to live. Happiness is limitless material acquisition. Progress is an inherent good. Everything important can be purchased. Look out for number one. Our culture is better than any other. None of our values and beliefs are immune from the influence of the media. Many of the films and videos that flood the marketplace have from first to last been developed into a series of gimmicks to manipulate audience response. The plot and characters are not always meant to reflect reality or to make a statement concerning the human condition. 
They are often carefully designed ploys to create reactions from the viewers, often of the cheap thrill kind. The producer's goal sometimes reduces the ingredients of the show to their lowest common denominator. And as is the case for many such products which are fabricated to generate the maximum amount of financial return, the ingredients are sometimes dangerous to the consumer's health, dangerous to the formation of attitudes, dangerous to the concepts we have of manhood, womanhood, God. The electronic media creates a very powerful illusion. Through the skilled use of images, special effects, music, and camera work, the wizards of film and video can take us on a journey through our emotions, our memories, our fantasies, hopes, and dreams. Whether children or adults, we as viewers are most often uncritically drawn into those illusions flashing before us on the screen. Like a hypnotist, the media can do then with us what it wants, make us cry, make us laugh, become angry or passionate. Quite often, we have no control over the effects of the material we're viewing. Studies have shown that repeated viewing of violent scenes often numbs us to real violence. How is it that electronic images have such power over us? How is it that passive viewing can become unconscious brainwashing? What is this power of image? In the past, uh, the arts were used to frame reality in ways we don't think about the arts today. That is, in the absence of uh, mass media, easy access to images. Images were fairly rare. They were patronized by powers, institutional powers, uh, like the church, uh, like political institutions. And they became ways of embodying, that is, making concrete certain invisible truths, invisible ideas, which were nevertheless important for giving cohesion and order to a society whether these uh, images represented the supernatural, the afterworld, the relationship of the powers of this world, they became sacramental, and I use the word here, as giving a concrete, visible reality to that which is often intangible and invisible. The images of the past uh, played a very positive role in building a structure of order in a sense, providing a worldview in which people were able to fit their individual lives. Now, sacramental images have changed, and that in a pervasive, highly secular society, uh, major institutions, uh, economic, political, have the wisdom to use images in a sacramental way. That is to say, images are used to reinforce and to legitimate belief. I think today, uh, people aren't aware of the power of images. In the medieval period, the church had morality plays in which they had an opportunity to reflect on situations. There are many ways in which the media today provide us that kind of opportunity. There's a chance for us to reflect on values apart from the pressure of having to act in a particular situation. And I think that this is one of the values that the media can make that's a very positive contribution toward our Christian faith and development. It is important for us to be able to see our faith in relation to our culture, and our culture is one in which the media play a prominent role. We've had a revolution that is comparable to the invention of the printing press. That put a great deal of stress upon the printed word, upon reading. And that transformed the situation of the church. What the church did was to involve itself in education, to help people to be 
good readers able to interpret that which they read. And in our day and age in which the media are mushrooming, we have so many ways of delivery. We have satellites, we have video cassettes, we have laser video discs, we have cable systems. Our world is one which abounds with images and much of the communication and advertising and politics is communication in which images play a prominent role. If we are to be witnesses to our faith in this world, we have to be able to express our faith in terms of those powerful images that are all around us. They are things which shape our attitudes and our feelings. And if we are not aware of them, we are completely at their mercy. If we understand what is going on in the media, we then have the opportunity to participate, to share, to dialogue with it. We're all aware of the power of words, but there is a profound difference with the power of images. When we think about images, we don't always know precisely their meaning, for they speak the language of intuition and feeling. Image encompasses symbol and myth in its impact upon us. It reaches into the shadows of our dreams, into those unknown inner spaces, which psychologists have called the collective unconscious. Out of that intuitive side of our mind rise images which are symbolic representations of our deepest emotions and aspirations. Television is a melting pot of these subterranean forces which govern our inner lives and they define our values for us. We must understand that our values, our concepts of right and wrong depend upon invisible concepts which have been embedded in the flickering forms dancing in our living rooms. In the process, a strange phenomena has occurred. Films and television have given us a secular mythology which parallels our religious mythology. This means that we can sometimes venerate as sacred truths ideas which are devoid of spiritual value. Ideas like being number one, excelling in competition, might makes right.